Hey, what's good? It's uh, Andrew from ProducerSociety.com. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make automation in GarageBand. I'm going to show you how to set up the points and how to get it to work. Um, so fundamentally, the two, the two softwares are similar. And by the two softwares, I mean uh, Mac OS GarageBand and also iOS GarageBand. So, so yeah, there's definitely some similarities between how you do both, but um, there are some minor variations in terms of how you set it up. But anyway, so I'm going to show you right now. Um, let's actually, uh, let's create a track right now. Let's just do like a simple chord progression. So for instance, let's, uh, first I'm going to check the workspace to make sure it actually functions. Okay, so I'm going to hit record and I'm just going to make up a three chord thing. There. So we got something made, just three chords. I'm going to drag this back like that. And then so what you want to do, it's, it's really quite simple. Um, you just click on your, your icon like that, the icon, the piano icon on the left hand side. Um, click on it once, hit automation, and then now you're bringing up your automation points. So you can turn it on in two different ways. It, it works, sometimes it works differently, but you can either hit the line to turn it on, or you can uh, hit this icon in the side. Either way will work. Um, sometimes I find it doesn't always work, but either way, like one of the, one or the other will, will work. Um, so yeah, that's how you do it. And then what you want to do is you want to drag your little, your pen icon in the top left, drag that over so it's no longer locked. And then you just drop in your automation points like this. And then, you know, you can uh, adjust it that way. And that's how you do it. And then once you're done, you slide it back over to the left like that, hit done. And then now it's done. Um, so you can actually see it like that. Um, but if you want to turn it off, you just hit the button again, and then that'll turn the automation off if that's what you want to do. But we're going to keep that on. Actually, we're going to, we're going to get rid of it right now because we have to do more of a demonstration later. Um, so I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to turn that off like that. All right, so uh, that's how you do automation in GarageBand. Um, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you I'm going to show you how to automate panning and I'm going to show you how to automate other effects which is uh, pretty straightforward um, it's it's not quite as intuitive as you doing it in Mac OS because technically you can't automate effects and panning in GarageBand uh, iOS but there are ways around it so I'm going to show you how to do that and essentially how you do it is through is through duplicate duplication so you just click on your uh, your thing or excuse me, click on your icon on the left-hand side, hit duplicate, and that's gonna load in a new software instrument track. From there, you double-click on your track region, hit copy, go down into the new software instrument track, hit paste, and now we got the same thing on one. So let's say you wanna create the stereo panning effect. Well, what you do is you go into your, your fader, hit your fader button on the top left, and then we're gonna pan that all the way to the left, then we're going to go down to the second one, and we're going to pan that all the way to the right. So now we have panning effect on two different tracks. So if you want to create the panning effect, what you do is now you want to put volume automation on the one. You want to create volume automation on the one, and then you put all, uh, volume automation on the other. So I'll show you what I mean right now. So we're going to put the automation on this bad boy. We're going to go like that. Uh, yeah, there we go. I'm going to make that more equal. And then we're going to go down to the other one. And then we're going to, we're going to drop that down like this. We're going to drop that down like that. And then so right around the same time, um, they're going to, they're going to start working together. You know what I mean? So, so like, there, that's how it's set up. And then we're gonna slide that over like this, and then we're gonna hit done. And then so basically, it's gonna create the stereo panning effect because one is increasing in volume while the other is uh, is decreasing in volume. So you can see it again. So we're gonna hit done, and then I'm gonna hit play to show you what that sounds like. hit play again just because I had a metronome on. There. So 
I can't actually hear what is going on right now, unfortunately, because uh, just because of the way screen flow is set up. But regardless, I hope you could hear that. Um, yeah. So that's how you do the stereo panning effect. Now, let's say that you want to have uh, you want to add delay um, to one part of the track, but not the other. So essentially, that's almost like an automation effect. Well, what you want to do is essentially the same thing. To be honest with you, it's it's essentially the same thing. You do duplication, but then you uh, you have delay on the one, and then not delay on the other, and then you increase the volume motivation of the one, and then not the other. So I'll show you what I mean right now. So we got we got this one track here, right? Let's actually uh, go into the automation again. Let's get rid of this automation. Let's get rid of this automation. And by the way, if you want to refresh your automation, you just like slide it over like that. Um, and that's how you do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to set up delay on. Uh, we're going to go into the plugins and we're going to set up a delay on the one, but not the other. So here track echo. Now it's turned on. We're going to increase the wet to 100 percent. And then we're going to we're going to get out of that now. I'm just going to make sure I did set that up. Yeah. So it's turned on. So that's on the, the right one. And then um, on the left one, we want to make sure there's no track echo on it. We want to make sure there's no track echo. Yeah, and there isn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the setting because I still have the panning effect set up. So we're going to get rid of that on, as well because that's a, a, re, a, a, a residue from what I just showed you. There we go. So we got delay on this one. We got delay on this one, and then we don't have delay on the first one just to show you again. So we're going to put volume automation. We're going to put volume, excuse me, we're going to put delay on the final chord of this, of this measure or this bar. So what we want to do is we want to go into automation again, then we're going to add some automation points. We're going to drag that lock over, add double automation points, just because I find that makes it much easier. So we got, we turned that one right off. And then for this one, we're gonna we're gonna uh, either you, well you can do it two ways like you can drag, you can either do it like this, where you can do it like this where we just like drop the volume down of this second one, or we can just delete part of the track entirely. And I think we're actually gonna do it that way just because that's how I showed you how to do it in the article as well. So we're, yeah, we're gonna get rid of this. Uh, we're just going to get rid of half of it like that. So we're going to go down into the automation again. We're just going to get rid of that automation altogether because there's no reason for it to be there really. So yeah. There. So basically the one is going to play. It's going to play with delay. So now we're going to play this and I'm going to show you how there is a delay effect on this second piano. I'm just going to go into the delay again and make sure that it's actually going to work there. So I'm going to show you now. So we're going to hit play. So there you go. You'll notice that there's delay. <clears throat> on the final part of that track, just on the one chord. So yeah, it's uh, this is a way of getting around the fact that you can't actually use um, automation on effects in GarageBand iOS as well as panning. So it is time consuming and it, and it is annoying, but ultimately it's a way of doing it so you can get around it. Um, but fundamentally, I think it's best to do this stuff just right in uh, GarageBand uh, Mac, Mac OS, um, you know, I technically I would say that iOS projects is mostly just for drafts, but uh, yeah, you know, make sure you like and subscribe if you like this video. I hope it helped you out. Um, and I think that's pretty much it for this video. I don't have much else to say. You can just apply the same concept to, to other effects. All right. So uh, yeah, I guess that's it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. All right. Peace.